So welcome, folks. Uh, my name is Rob Tompkins, uh, and um, I'm going to tell my story about how I got involved with the Apache Software Foundation in hopes that it uh, lessens people's apprehension with getting involved in open source uh, projects, because um, I, I feel like a lot of people out there think that, uh, you know, the, the code bases are, are so profound and um, and vital to the ecosystem that uh, touching them is is terrifying. And um, I mean, I've broken my fair share of stuff and we can use the all the help we can get. So um, with that, I'll uh, I'll introduce myself. Um, so I'm from Richmond, Virginia, um, born and raised in Richmond, uh, going back a couple a couple generations here, actually. So I'm I'm really stuck. <laughs> Um, but uh, in, in school, I did uh, a bunch of mathematics and mathematical logic. And over the past 10 years, I've done development in Java, Python, um, DevOps and security, and a bunch of cloud stuff. Um, I've worked in the financial sector a good bit. I've worked a little bit for state government. I've worked in um, e-commerce. And most recently, I've been doing work in the transportation sector. Um, in Richmond, it's kind of hard to stay out of the financial sector. So, um, I've, I've done a considerable amount there, particularly with Capital One. And, um, I am currently on the project management committee for Apache Commons and I'm an Apache member. And just recently I've been appointed to be the, uh, Jakarta EE relationship manager at, um, Apache. So that should be fun. Um, it'll be a fun new experience for me. And if you guys are into adventure sports, I don't know who out there may or may not be into adventure sports, but uh, I do a whole lot of mountain biking, rock climbing, and whitewater kayaking. Uh, the whitewater kayaking is kind of, I've put, I've put a little bit by the wayside because it's a bit dangerous, but um, that's who I am. So the next question is, uh, and I, I posted this um, when I was talking at the DC Roadshow in 2019, and I didn't know who might be in the audience, but you know, does anyone not know what an open source project is? And uh, one would hope that because you're at Apache Con, you you would indeed know what an open source project is. Um, but if you don't, there is opensource.org, and opensource.org has FAQs. And um, if you go to hashtag OSD, and that's the open source definition, um, it clearly defines well, it mostly clearly defines what an open source project is. And for, for all intents and purposes, it just is a project where the code base is readable minimally at time of artifact delivery. We at the Apache Software Foundation like to have the code bases be a little bit more open than that and accessible to the general public. Um, so since I spend so much time on Apache Commons, uh, the question would then be, what is a, the Apache Commons project, right? And we're essentially the project that houses all of the shared code across the Apache projects. Um, we came out of Jakarta, which was the Java project that um, was originally housing all of the Java code at Apache and uh, Back in 2007 or 2008, somewhere in that time frame, uh, it was decided that housing a collection of projects based upon a language would not be the best idea, and housing projects based upon intent uh, was a better idea. So they split up Jakarta Commons, it went into the attic in 2011. And Jakarta Commons, which was the shared libraries across all the Java project, ended up in Apache Commons. And oddly enough, the Eclipse Foundation recently co-opted the Jakarta name and uh, are using it for their Java project. So the Jakarta EE project is now the Java EE project, which is which is kind of cool that they took our name and um, you know moved it forward. So 
what else is commons do our current mission is to provide a place for the asf to you know collaborate and despite the fact that the majority of our code bases are java we are not closed minded to other languages for example there's c in some of our code bases for example commons crypto uh, shims down into open ssl using c code and i'm open to if people need a common place to put code across a couple TLPs at the Apache Software Foundation that they um, contact us at Commons and 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 throw the code base in. And, and something that affords people the luxury of being able to do that is that Commons has uh, repeatedly tried to make it clear that we encourage any Apache committer to come over and request commit rights and we'll just grant them to you. So if you have commit rights on, I don't know, Spark or something like that, then come on over and say, I'd like to contribute to uh, Commons Lang or Commons IO, and we'll give you commit rights and we'll go from there. So what does Apache Commons look like today? Uh, it's 33 independent Java projects. The most popular projects based on the GitHub star algorithm are Lang, IO, collections, math, and pool. And surprisingly, math is in there. We've had some uh, some community snafus in the math area and lost some folks. And I think we've been making some progress over the last little while at rebuilding the community and being a little bit more open-minded to the math folks and trying to help them move forward so that we continue to have a thriving uh, community of math folks. So, what are the benefits of open source software? And that's uh, something that I try to preach at my day job because a lot of times they lose sight of it and think that, uh, you know, it's just free software and um, end up writing a whole lot of their own libraries internally in the same fashion as open source software would be written, but um, are in instead internal libraries. But it's, it's the standardization of libraries. So, uh think about the the screw um for a machine back in the 1800s if your machine broke you had to go out to the blacksmith and take him the broken screw from your machine and be like i need another one of these can you can you please put another one of these together for me and um they would make you a new screw and you'd put it in your machine and uh, around the turn of the the 19th into the 20th century, people were like, hey, why don't we just uh, come up with a standard blueprint and make screws and then machines will take those screws and it'll just work. So, um, for example, if you need a, a string utils out there in the Java area, then odds are you're probably going to either come to Apache Commons or you're going to end up in the Spring Frameworks string utils, which is effectively analogous to ours. But I mean, that's only two places to go as opposed to you know, hundreds of places to go. Uh, more eyes is fewer bugs. Uh, the only good test environments production, guys, whether you like it or not. And um, that's simply because the generation of the combinatorial possibilities necessary to tease all the bugs out is only available in production. So more eyes, fewer bugs, more people are using the library so the, the, the bugs get teased out. And so you're more likely to have stable code that if it's open source and properly maintained. So you need to also ensure that there's a community of folks behind it. Cause if you've got just one guy out there maintaining it, then who knows how quickly the bugs will get fixed. And you get long-term support. Uh, we subscribe to the developer got hit by a bus syndrome uh, problem. And that's the problem of if somebody on the project gets hit by a bus, which, you know, there, there, there are better ways to say that, right? Uh, we, we could say developer wins the lot, lottery syndrome, but it, it's been classically termed the developer hit by bus syndrome. Uh, if, if, that, uh, if that happens, we need to make sure the project goes forward. So uh, Apache has it as one of their core tenets that, that the project community should be thriving, sufficiently thriving that if someone goes radio silent, the, the project continues moving forward and continues to have support. And that's an extremely important feature in my mind. 
Um, when I came onto Apache Commons, one of the big guys on the project was Benedict Ritter, and he's since moved on to uh, Gradle and does a lot of work for them. But he coined a, uh, a a definition when I was at Apache Con in 2016, or actually it's a law that he came up with that that I particularly like. So uh, so I, I include it in the talk just just for funsies. And that's that uh, everything that's not part of our domain or business logic or the crazy legacy systems, which we need to integrate with, has already been developed by somebody much smarter than we are, right? And so that goes back to the standardization thing. Why would I want to go into my backyard and, and well, I, I, I use my backyard as my wood shop, but why would I use my backyard and go out there and be like, I need a new bolt. I'm going to go machine it myself. I mean, there'd be some interesting uh, learnings from the exercise of doing that, but, but I can go to the store and buy the bolt and put it into whatever I need to put it into fairly quickly and easily. So the idea there is don't reinvent the wheel, right? So the question becomes, why did I get involved? And this is a bit of a funny story. So uh, in 2016, in March of 2016, my second daughter was being born and I was like, oh, I'm going to have a little bit of time during paternity leave. I'm going to start doing open source development. I think it's a great idea. Um, in hindsight, that might, have, might not have been the best time to get involved, but I did have, you know, some, some free hours here and there that weren't occupied by um, my day job. And the other thing that I was particularly interested in was keeping my mathematical background sharp. Um, I'd been out of school then for almost seven years, eight years. And I felt rusty. I felt rusty. Um, granted, writing code kind of keeps your mathematical logic up to snuff, but um, even still, I wanted to make sure that I could get in there and do derivatives appropriately, and you know, do the do the statistics appropriately, and um, maintain my standard mathematical ideas that you would think of as you know the undergraduate math classes you would take. And so I, I got involved for that. Um, I got involved because I thought career advancement would be uh, would be a thing that would would come out of it. It's it's kind of been, but kind of not been. I've I've unfortunately been in a lot of circumstances where uh, people have admonished me for doing open source work because uh, despite my doing it in my own time, if I were to put it into my review they saw the list of items in my review and they said, hey, 30% of this is, is stuff that's not on my intent list. Why are you doing that? Why am I not getting that bandwidth? And um, I found that it's prudent to just not tell people what I'm doing in the open source world, unfortunately. Um, I've been kind of stung by that a couple times now. Uh, but having my work out there in the public domain, I can because I interview particularly poorly at places, I can point to code that I've written and be like, listen, if you wanna see the kind of code that I write, here it is. It's GPG signed by me, so it's mine. Um, and so I, I use it to my advantage still. And I particularly enjoy the fact that I'm not constrained by timelines, okay? Uh, I can take my time on a problem and do it to the to the point where I feel like I've done it right. And that's something that my day job has never afforded me. I, it's, it's always get it done, get it out the door, get to the next thing now. And I, I mean, that's just the nature of profit driven business, I, su I suppose. So what does an arbitrary person do to get involved? What would you do? Um, Pick a subject that you're passionate about. Uh, like I said, I particularly enjoyed math. So I actually grabbed the guys on Commons Math and were like, how can I help with Commons Math? Um, and they gave me some good suggestions. Uh, another thing you can do is pick a project that you're actively using at work. And that actually would help probably with the intent problem that I have because Apache Commons is, is particularly low level relative to standard application development. And so 
the folks that I work with don't see the fact that they're using Apache Commons virtually everywhere and that it still needs to be maintained. And so they just think of it as that free code out there that we need not contribute to. And say la vie, I, I still manage through that and it's no big deal. And check on the Git stats page. Um, gets changed a little bit, but you can find the contributors page or the committers page, and you can see who's actively committing to a project and find their contact information. I mean, you, if, if I were to go out here and look at, this is Commons Lang, I believe, and this is what, uh, this is in October of 18, okay? So this is this is a bit old, but I can go out here and I can be like, oh, well, there's Gary Gregory and Benedict Ritter and Seb, and I can hop into then the mailing list. If you guys see this, uh, the, the, this is a bit small maybe for some folks, but uh, if you go out and you go to Commons mailing lists, you can subscribe to the mailing list. And then I could go back, right? And find these guys who are emailing the mailing list on a regular basis and I can find their email and I could email them personally and be like, well, how, how can I get involved? And um, generally people have pretty good suggestions. Um, so find the mailing list, uh, use the readme.md. Uh, this is a link to the readme.md in, in Lang. The readme's got a bunch of really valuable information in it. We keep our readme's up to date. We actually use a Maven plugin to keep them up to date. So they're automatically generated from a template that we regularly update. Email someone directly, like I said. So those are some, some quick and easy ways that you can get involved. How do you then figure out what to work on? Well, if, if, you, if you're working with it in your day job, then you probably have some bugs that you've teased out or something like that, that, uh, that you kind of have a good beat on where the bugs are and what you could potentially contribute. And so contributing, you know, JIRAs and patches in that fashion is an easy way to get started. But if you're trying to get into something new and fresh that you've never really waded into, well, nobody's got perfect unit test coverage, right? Nobody. If they do, then I don't know. That, that, that project's strange. But I don't know of any project that's got perfect unit test coverage. For example, uh, one of the, the most heavily used database connection pooling uh, projects is Commons DBCP. It was the default for the Spring Framework for a long time. And in the fall of 18, the test coverage was about 45%. And so, you know, we, we've, we've improved it since then, but, you know, there's always room for tests. Uh, Documentation is also a good place. Here's my statement, you know, no one's got 100% test coverage. There's some people that have 100% test coverage, but like I said, they're, they're weird. Um, find a ticket. My first major contribution was this ticket, which was, it was the fact that parse integer in Java 7 differs from parse integer in Java 8. And thus, Commons Lang has a parse number. And depending upon the underlying version of Java you're using, you get different results out of parse number. Um, if you had a, a leading uh, I think if you had leading zeros in front of the decimal sign with a negative sign or something like that, things would fall apart um, with parse number. It wasn't parse number. I guess it was parse uh, parse double, not parse integer. But um, or if you put zeros before an integer or something like that, things would fall over. So I had to predicate which version of Java you're actually running and do different parsing mechanics based upon the different versions of Java that was running. And um, with the completion of that ticket, they actually voted me in and gave me uh, commit privileges. And note that was after four months of writing tests. So I, I did that in the fall of 16, and I had been writing tests since March. So how does one start integrating themselves into our Apache communities? Uh, Open-mindedness 
tolerance, understanding that a lot of the folks out there on these lists are English as a second language speakers. Um, those are all at least ideas that you should have in your head when you wade in. Um, let me let me hop over and make sure that I'm not missing any questions here. People could have asked questions. How do you get started with open source prior to contribution if no such prior experience with that? Uh, do you have, do you really had time during, <laughs> I did have time during paternity leave. It actually worked out. And, um, and, uh, Surjan, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I think I'm heading towards your question now. Um, so, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll get there and, and pardon the infinite recursion on the screen. That's kind of fun. <laughs> um, I'll head back over to the slides now. Um, but yeah, yeah, Thomas, I, I, it, it somehow worked out even, even through the paternity leave that it, that it, uh, that I, 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 it, that I got involved in, uh, I don't know. Now my daughters are four and six and they still require lots of my time. <laughs> but um, read all the documentation on the project. Uh, reading the documentation is important. That's how I figured out how to do most of the stuff with Apache Commons. People didn't tell me how to uh, help other folks get commits in. After I got commit rights, you know, somebody opens a pull request. How do I help them get the pull request in? Well, there are a couple of different places that we document all the different stuff. And it took me a little while to figure out exactly, you know, how to maintain our changes XML and how to effectively make sure that the, the work is attributed to an individual. Um, don't be afraid to weigh in on the mailing list, but uh, do be polite. Do be polite. Um, I try my hardest to be polite, even if I'm quite frustrated with people. I, I have um, I have times of frustration, and I tend to vent one on one with somebody, and then get my venting done. A lot of times, it's my wife that hears me venting, right? So <laughs> it's not even somebody on the project. So I try to get the venting done, and then I try to go back to the email and be like, okay, well, how can I help with your problem? And how can we move in this direction? And I try to offer, if somebody has a problem with something, I try to offer my help with their particular uh, project, uh, particularly if I disagree with the tactics that they're taking. So I'll offer a dissenting opinion, give suggestions, and then tell them I'm willing to help after all of that, right? And I feel like that helps hold people in the community because they see me say something negative and then see me follow along with helping the person doing the exact same that I'm exact thing that I'm suggesting against, okay? And I'll do on the the portions of commons the the I'll adhere to my tenants. And I'll use those as examples for other people and be like, well, here's how we did it over here, but I'm not going to try to, you know, change you as a person. All I can do is show by example or lead by example and then help, even though I'm frustrated with the mechanics of the way things are going there, because even still the pro the, the, the um, project needs to move forward. So even if I'm frustrated with somebody, their stuff needs to get up and out the door. So I try to, you know, set the frustration aside, leave it with my dissenting opinion and help the person move the project forward because that's just the right thing to do. Um, and if you're new, try to stick to plus or minus zero votes. And the question is, okay, what, what, what is, what, what the heck does that mean? So let's, um, quickly delve into Apache Software Foundation style voting. Okay. And there's a good write up on this in the community section of the, the apache.org main site. But this kind of gives you just a, a quick little, uh, you know, scratch the surface into voting. And I'll, I'll try to, you know, be kind of clear on some of this stuff because there's some nuances here that um, even I didn't know until yesterday. 
but uh, standardly, when you're when you're talking about consensus, like talking about an idea, or setting up for a proposal, or doing a release of artifacts, uh, we use a voting mechanism. And you've probably seen some of that around if you're familiar and have been on these dev email lists. Um, but we have plus one is yes. We have plus zero. I'm okay with this. And uh, I don't care. Um, sometimes people will plus zero and be like, I don't really want to get involved with that. I think that it's a bad idea, but I'm not going to block. And I'm not going to really spend a whole lot of time telling you why I think it's a bad idea. Um, people throw out minus zeros. Uh, I particularly like the minus zero because I try to spend my time in minus zero as opposed to minus one. And that's where I expressly am non-blocking of a proposal or an idea, but I'm trying to offer a dissenting opinion. So I'll, if I have a minus zero, explain why I think it's a bad idea. But this is the case, like I was talking about earlier, where I'll, I'll go out and and go and help the person with their issues, even if they go away from the opinion that I've offered. And so I, I particularly enjoy minus zero so that I can uh, try to move things in a direction that I, that I think are a good direction architecturally and whatnot, and still keep the community together because a minus one is a direct veto. And that applies on consensus building. So if I'm trying to talk about a topic generally, um, that applies on official proposals. And um, on lazy votes, it's not entirely clear to me whether a minus zero kills the vote. I think that it probably does unless we're talking about releasing components. So let's actually look, let's go through those things. Those are on the next page. So voting is used in a variety of capacities, okay? Uh, consensus building, which is non-formal. So, you know, like somebody's like, oh, I'm thinking about uh, adding these commits and someone's like, oh yeah, plus one, that sounds like a great idea. That's kind of the consensus non-formal zone. Uh, proposals. That's where you actually lob a vote out there, and it's not about explicitly release binaries. It's more about project direction, and a minus one in this capacity is indeed a veto and just pulls the whole thing off the table. Um, they're lazy votes and package releases. Uh, we actually on uh, Commons have some lazy vote package releases, but they're only on artifacts that are to be consumed internally to the project. So for example, the, the commons parent palm is a lazy vote and that way the community doesn't have to spend their time trying to sort out whether or not commons parents a, a, a solid release because the only people that are gonna consume it are the commons projects. And the only way to really find out whether or not a potential parent candidate is going to work is to integrate it into the project. So we do a lazy vote, we send it out there, and if there are bugs with it, we just up version and continue forward. And then package releases uh, has a little bit more rigor behind it. So with package releases, you need to have three PMC votes that are plus ones, and then a majority. And by a majority, I mean, you know, if you have three plus ones and three minus ones, that's stalemate. If you've got three plus ones and four minus ones, that means you're not going out the door. And if you've got three plus ones and two minus ones, then you're good to go. That said, let's go to the next page and talk about how we on, on commons do, do this. Um, so this is all very, very community dependent about how the, the, I mean, they're rigid guidelines out there, but you can get more subtle than, than those rigid guidelines. The rules are kind of like a good scaffold. But for example, we on commons, oh wait, this is, I missed a page. Did I skip over a page? Oh, here we go. That's what I was trying to say, this last bit. Uh, if I roll a release candidate on commons on commons lang and somebody gives me a minus one, I'm gonna take it really seriously and I'm probably gonna cancel the release. 
and I'm probably going to go back through and figure out why they gave me a minus one. A lot of times it's because like the notice file doesn't have the latest copyright or something like that. And that's a minor nit, right? But having the latest copyright on our stuff when we go out the door is quite important. So we take the, the minus votes very, very seriously and try to indulge whatever the minus one was for. Um, so regarding the, the privileges, and this is kind of a, a trust hierarchy, and I've actually used this in a variety of locations. Um, I've tried to use this at uh, most of my workplaces as, as mechanisms of, you know, these are the levels of trust, whether you like it or not. And um, this is community dependent, but uh, Apache generally has the, the, the following hierarchy. Um, there's a user, so that's anyone consuming the software. Uh, there's a contributor, so that's anyone who has commits in the repository or documentation that they've written that is actively being served in any capacity. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's pretty clear what that is. Um, a committer is someone who can actually push commits to the repository directly. Uh, for Apache Commons, we accommodate that they can make changes to any site that make the site or the, or components, and they can present votes for voting for releases. You, you kind of need to have commit privileges to get all the release notes and all that stuff set up in a branch. Um, it wouldn't surprise me now with the mechanics of Git that, it, that somebody could potentially do a release without having direct commit rights to the repository, but um, it would be really tricky and they would need someone to hold their hand pretty closely. And uh, for a project, there's the committee member. So they, they have the ability to vote on releases. They can propose new committers. They can propose new committee members. Um, and then there's the committee chair. Um, they prepare reports for the board about the project's direction and success. Um, I say UG here. Now I've, I've become someone that has to give monthly reports to the board as the uh, Jakarta EE guy. So um, I suppose I need to remove UG from the, uh, <laughs> from the slides, but what are you going to do? It was there from when I, I presented this back in 2019. So after I got commit rights, this is kind of wrapping up what I did in Commons to get to uh, to get into the PMC. So I got commit rights in the fall of 16, and I was invited into the PMC in June of 17. And so I emailed Gary and Benedict, those guys that you saw back there on the Commons Lang committers uh, screen, and I said, okay, what do you guys think that we should do? And they had a couple suggestions, and one of them was that this uh, component commons text was in the sandbox, and they thought that uh, it might be a good idea to move some of the textier stuff like edit distances and heavy text manipulation algorithms out of commons lang and into a separate library so that commons lang is more of a, a library for the arbitrary Java developer. So that, you know, if you're doing Java applications develop, application development, that if you don't have commons lang in, in your, your dependency list, then, you know, it's kind of a bit of a head scratcher because you're probably writing a lot of functionality that would otherwise be present and written for you and maintained for you already. Um, so I asked Benedict and Gary what they thought I should do, and they told me that I should start working on commons text. So. I read up on figuring out how to release components because we've got a page specifically dedicated to the documentation of preparing a release out of commons and how that works. And then I moved a bunch of stuff out of Lang into text. The stuff's still in Lang because we haven't done a major release and we make non-breaking changes, but it's deprecated. And I did a beta release and two dot releases. And then later on that year, I helped get commons file upload out the door that had a CVE associated with it. And I was kind of new to CVEs at the time. And uh, 
so I kind of had my hands in on the, the file upload release. And incidentally, I didn't know this at the time, but that was in and around the same, same sort of zone that the um, Equifax data breach <laughs> happened in. Um, the actual data breach was in struts and in a specific section of struts that mirrors what was going on in Commons file upload. And um, the reason that the data breach even happened was that uh, Equifax wasn't using the latest version of struts. By the way, you should use the latest version of the of the the, the libraries that you you're consuming, or at least attempt to do so. It's it's good security practice. But um, I got that out the door, and then uh, myself and this other guy, Pascal Schumacher, got voted into being on the PMC. And since then, I've fixed a bunch of different CVEs. I've released a bunch of different components, and then um, this is where questions would arise. And so the question would then become. How did I make it to being a, a an Apache member? And in the winter of 2018, I subscribed to the community dev list. And um, the roadshow for DC, the Apache roadshow is a one day event was being planned. And so I offered to help with that. And I set up the website or at least I got all the, the data entry done for the website. And then we had the event and it went pretty well. Uh, it was well attended. And um, just following that, I got voted into being a member. And I, I've been eternally grateful. I've been trying to steward things as best I could uh, or as best I can uh, across Apache. I try to be uh, open-minded and and listening to the community, uh, you, you might actually see a quote from me in a, there was a, an article out in the Stack Overflow blogs about open source stuff. And my quote was something to the effect of, well, you know, we on Apache do, do things in a, in a real democratic way and that's slow, but you know, the benevolent dictator model, that's worked for some people. I mean, look at, look at Linus and the Linux kernel, right? And so being open-minded about how people do things differently is really, really important. Um, and so I try to keep that, keep that in mind. And so uh, that's, that's my whole, whole spiel. And I've got two minutes and 15 seconds left. And um, I'll hop over and see if there are any questions. So if I can, so I can answer, answer questions. Let's see here. Uh, how do you choose the right project to work for the next for the next years to come uh that's that's um that's hard uh i know apache commons kind of is an old-fashioned sort of project right we uh we it just it just is what it is right it, it, we try to stay with the latest long-term supported version of java and try to keep the ball moving forward but it's kind of an old project. The new work there in the commons world is actually in the random number generator area and some of the math projects, which is kind of cool to see. But um, it's really hard to know where the right place is to be. I, you know, sometimes wish I was on the Kubernetes project or on the Go project personally, but, you know, I, I find that uh, sticking with the project that I'm on, I, I find that to be an important characteristic of, of keeping things moving. Uh, I've I've made contributions here and there to other things. I've made contributions to Jack Jack's RS. I've made contributions to the Spring Framework. Uh, I'm making contributions right now to the Inner Source Commons about uh, open source governance and trying to define what an inner source project is. Um, I'm trying to you know lift a whole lot of the open source definition in that. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is uh, part of the time that I was at uh, Capital One, I tried to start an inner source incubator a whole lot like the Apache incubator, and it kind of went up and then petered and then didn't get enough, uh, it didn't get enough executive support to really take off. But I mean, say la vie. Um, is accepting a PMC nomination worth it? Uh, that's a great question. 
Um, there is responsibility that goes along with it, but there's also uh, prestige that goes along with it. So it, it shows that you have some power in the open source world. I mean, what little power I have, I mean, I don't know. I get to vote on releases. But um, I, I found it to be worth it. It's it's still a lot of time, but um, I don't know. It it I, I've I've also found myself sometimes not spending as much time as I would like on the project, and that's I, I spent a lot of time last year at a financial startup, and um, I needed to focus on their AWS security. And so I spent the whole time doing that and doing AWS networking and I am as opposed to working on commons. And then I was afforded some free time in the spring. And so I did a little bit more commons work and um, I've been trying to make sure that uh, release candidates that get votes proposed on them actually get voted on. So I'm still trying to make sure that I'm reasonably engaged, despite the fact that I may not be actively making commits, but Right now, I know that I need to release Commons parent and Commons uh, release plugin, which are the two mechanisms by which we've automated and streamlined our release process. I actually wrote the release plugin based on the uh, the Maven release plugin. And the only reason that we have our own release plugin is that our release mechanics involves checking things into a subversion repository, publishing a site, and doing a bunch of really custom things. And so, I found it prudent to have all those things scripted and why not just do that in a Maven plugin? So that's why I wrote that. Um, if people are trying to do releases themselves, I would suggest using the Maven release plugin and not the commons release plugin because our release plugin won't get you anywhere good. Um, other than if you're trying to release one of our artifacts and check a bunch of stuff into the commons um, release artifact staging area and subversion. <laughs> um, any other questions? Uh, if you guys have any more questions, I've actually created a commons uh, channel out here on Slack. Okay, so um, feel free to hop in and ping me questions out there. Feel free to hop into the commons community. Um, I watch both of those, um, both of those lists fairly closely. Uh, my email is on the website if you go to you can like if you go to uh let's go back to the the slide deck let's go back to the beginning of this guy oh come on view always show urls oh come on show toolbar there we go so if you guys go back to let's see here Back here at the beginning, um, this is the URL for the presentation. It's uh, this is a Git uh, a GitHub repository that um, is doing GitHub pages, and it's just a JavaScript or a, a Reveal JS project. And um, my contact information is out here on robtompkins.com, so uh, you can find me there. Uh, Ch Tomkey is the prefix on all my stuff. That's my GitHub handle. That's my Apache email handle. That's my GitHub email handle. That's my LinkedIn handle. That's my Twitter handle. That's my everything, right? So I, I try to be consistent across the board. So if you guys are trying to find me, that's the way you find me. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hope everybody has a good rest of the conference. And um, thank you guys for coming out. I hope that you have, uh, I hope that you hop into the next, next, uh, next session and have fun there. So um, with that, I'm going to wrap up. Thanks, guys. Hope you all have a good afternoon or evening or morning. Right. Everywhere. <laughs> Catch you guys later.